British folklore, looking for creatures and stories that would make for a good encounters. My sister pretended to be Jenny Greenteeth and scared the shit out of me when I was a kid. This gives me PTSD flashbacks. What was Jenny Green we- Greenteeth? No. She was just a liver hag, wasn't she? Like a witch? Yeah, but it wasn't her. I just remember my friggin' family. Iki Moki. Iki Moki. <laughs> Iki Moki was my granny. <laughs> Jenny granny. And don't ask me why I was terrified. Didn't know what he looked like at all. But just like a biggie man or what? Yeah, just Iki Moki. Absolutely terrified of him. I, I, see, I never heard of him before I started going out with you. Yeah. Did anybody else have like weird things that your family used to terrify you with? I'm sure everyone has something <laughs> like that. I grew up by the coast in Scotland. And my grandfather used to tell me about Kelpies. The shape-shifting horses that live in water and try to abduct and drown people to eat them. I'm pretty sure it was just to keep me away from the edges of boats as a small child, but they could still make for a decent aquatic encounter. Honestly, I think that's the problem with a lot of like folk tale stories and stuff. Mm -hmm. It's just scare kids. I think it is. Do what you're you're told, right? Yeah. Otherwise, the witches will come and eat yours. You (laughs) know what I mean? (laughs) Just the ones I can remember from my area. Old Ned. Fairly standard ghostly highwayman. I think every town and city had a ghost. <laughs> Some from on a, high- a road. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty standard. For us, there's a church. It's actually the oldest church in Ireland, I think. Mm-hmm. Oh, however, okay, so the original church was built like 400 AD. Mm-hmm. However, they built on top of it, like it was completely destroyed essentially, and they built on top of it like the 1400s, and the ruin of that church is still there. Yeah. So, you know. Local river takes a life every year. Check the record. It does. And supposedly stops flowing slash birds etc. go silent just before it attacks. Or however a river kills you. I don't know. Never been down there when it supposedly happens. Lord Watts' face forbids his son from marrying a farmer's daughter. That night a storm hits and the eight foot tall stone cross his ancestors erected on top of a hill is swept down into the river. Not the Killer River, a different one. He sends a crew to drag it out of the river and put it back where it belongs, which takes several days. That night, another storm sends it back down into the riverbed. Lord takes the hint and leaves the cross in the river, but doesn't let his son marry his farmyard sweetheart. Son dies in a hunting accident a few days before his arranged marriage. The Lord dies as the last of his family. Supposed to be the sort of punishment God hands out when he's in a romantic mood. Is this, right. <laughs> is this like the British folklore version of Romeo and Juliet? Yeah. <laughs> Ever heard of a graveyard grim? So there was a myth that the first person buried in a graveyard would be forced to stand guard over the sleeping ghosts. They would stand until Judgment Day, making sure that necromancers, witches, or evil spirits wouldn't disturb the sleepers. Nobody want this fate for their loved ones, so a graveyard grim would be created. A dog would be killed and buried in the graveyard before anyone else. The ghost of the dog would help guide lost souls back to their graves and chase away any necromancers and evil spirits who were trying to disturb the dead. That's very sweet. I like that. I really like that. Bury the whole killing of the dog bit. Can you not just like wait till the dog dies? Yeah, wait until the dog and dies. Then and then bury it there. It. Don't kill but the dog. I actually really like that. Yeah. I really like that. Um, I've been working on something a bit for my wee dog, Odie, or our wee dog. Um, he's actually five today. Yeah, just it's his birthday to... today. <laughs> it's his birthday Everybody today. Everybody say happy birthday to Odie in the comments. <laughs> he'll love it. He'll read them later. <laughs> yeah, of course he will. But no, I like to imagine that Odie, because he's a corgi, Jack Russell, I like to imagine him as a bit of a, like a forest well oh yeah he's definitely and i think he likes to live in like a wee bush yeah and he would definitely like you know he would feed off the sausage trees we would (laughs) and i also like to imagine that he would just help like like, lost travelers lost travelers in the woods he would (laughs) i know the way i know the way i'll help you you know and then he also has to go talk to the big tree from time to time (laughs) hey mr tree man you know what i mean uh it's like you these people need help you know I, i i love that idea you know north poster here when I was a lad, we went carol singing, and the green man, dude in a green outfit with leaves all over it, and the horned god, dude wearing a fur outfit and antlers, went with us. Christianity hadn't stamped out the old religion completely. Our little village had a modern church, and one that fell into ruin a few hundred years ago far up the hill. And if you went all the way to the top of the hill, you see the big flat rock, with the faded stains on it, from where animals, mostly had been sacrificed. He also got a lot of old superstitions like horseshoes nailed above the door 
and a bowl of milk or dripping had to be left out on certain nights to keep the bad spirits away. See, that's one of the things that always got me about the English. Like, you know, that's one of the arguments that they have of why they hate the Irish so much is because even whenever they converted to Christianity, it wasn't the light type of Christianity. It's, it kept too mm-hmm. much of the pagan elements. Yeah. But and you Irish get that. people are very superstitious. Oh, yeah. I would say very. Like, like incre- hyper. My mum still to this day, if she spills salt, she pours it over her right shoulder or left yeah, shoulder. I, I can't can... remember which one. Um, um, like, my your, grandmother. Your granny, she's my lethal. grandmother, she is. She convinced you she was a witch, though. Oh, 100%. I <laughs> that thought was my granny was a witch. That was more just fun, though. But it, it's... All of them are so superstitious, and I haven't met, like, especially the older generation. Yeah, I, think. I don't think I've met anyone under the age of 50 that like, isn't... My, um, my granny used to tell me whenever I was younger, because I was one of those kids who used to cheat at games because I wanted to win, and um, me and my cousin used to play, like, just cards with my granda and we used to like hide cards under the table and cheat and my granny caught us one time and she flipped out she was like you know if you cheat in cards the devil comes at night and gets you and she believed that all of her life that her her daddy was actually i think a gambling man Mm. and he's convinced that he was chased home one night by the devil because he cheated in a card game it's so strange yeah it actually as far as i can remember it what she told me that was um, it started off there was a dog following him uh-huh. it was late at night and he won money from a card game that he cheated on mm. and the dog was following him and it started to get faster and faster and he started to get faster next minute the dog's eyes turned fiery red and the flames burst out from the dog mm. and it started to morph into the ma- into like a, a, a beast yeah. the more he ran and the faster the dog get but he got home before he could get him oh that's something what, 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 but I don't know if I see my nanny's the type of person <laughs> to tell me this shit just to scare, scare the shit out of me so yeah. I don't know it's hard to say but what like you know is this your granny's dad so your great my great grand oh right so this would have been what between like 1920s 30s yeah yeah. Sometime in that like, time period. Yeah. yeah. Right. In my area so far, I've got Hell's Kettles. Four deep pools that spirits were said to cry out from. One day, a farmer took some loads of haze on St. Barnabas Day, June 11th. A day where pious folk should not work and was swallowed up in them, wagon, horses, and all. The Bargast. A mythical, monstrous black dog with large teeth and claws. But I guess that one got more popular than just locally. There's a tale of a man who ventures forth to the horrid gill of the limestone hill in order to summon and confront the Bargast in an act of ritual magic. The man's lifeless body is discovered soon after with inhuman marks upon his breast. There's also a story of a Bargast entering the city of York occasionally where, according to legend, it preys on lone travellers in the city's narrow snickleways. Claude Lad of Hylton At the beginning of the 17th century, in the employ of the Baron of the Estate, Sir Robert Halton was a stable boy called Roger Skelton. According to many tellings of the tale, Roger often complained of being clawed and took to sleeping in the hay in his master's stables, which was warmer and cosier than the servants' quarters. However, one day, young Roger overslept and didn't get his master's horse ready on time. The Baron flew into a terrible rage, slaying him on the spot, and more violently still, in some quarters it is alleged that the Baron's wrath was so great he lopped Roger's head clean off his shoulders. But there are other powers besides the law of man, and soon Hilden Castle was a troubled place. Pots were smashed, pans were thrown, the kitchen often trashed, strange noises were heard, cries and wailing, and most sinister of all, a shape of a body made from ashes where the fire would have been found on the floor. Roger, the cold lad, had returned to haunt the castle, it seems. Ooh. Ooh, spooky dirt dirt. That is a spooky dirt dirt. Hey guys, do you like models in your tabletop role-playing games? Because we do too. Do you like having big bitty waifus on your table? Because we do too. <laughs> <laughs> we got human bitties. We got lizard bitties. We got orc bitties. Oni bitties, cat bussies. We've got everything you want at neckbeardia.co.uk. <laughs> Check the links down below. It helps us out a lot. Sorry for interrupting the video. Let's get on the story. The Gorbel's Vampire. 1954, Glasgow. Two school children go missing. They're never found. 
Rumors circulate about a tall, pale man with metal teeth who kidnapped and devoured them. September that year, a large posse of school children, mostly, conduct a hunt. They raid the city's southern necropolis all night searching for this mysterious monster. Fuck all happens because what sort of vampire worth his blood would be stupid enough to turn up when there's a lynch mod out to get him? There are a few subsequent hunts. Nothing turns up. Children lose interest and it fades into general tension about spooky tall cunts. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, children still go missing. And sure, maybe... <laughs> uh, <laughs> Skip them words. <laughs> uh, you know what YouTube's like, boys. But when they don't turn up again, maybe, just maybe, it was the vampire. Ooh. Ooh. We don't really have any vampires. No, the only one I can think of is um, demon worshippers. Or devil worshippers. Devil worshippers. But I'm pretty sure that's just Tom Barry. Up to no good. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, I see you in the and comments. You know, I know purely what it is. You know what? It's just goths hanging about the fucking forest having a drink. And yeah. people are like, fucking devil worshippers. It was just go- it was just goths in the 80s and 90s. Yeah, sitting down a drink in the forest. That's, that is. Getting stoned and shit. And they're all like, start like humming like a chin. And people are like, fuck. <laughs> do you, you guys, do you not know this? But Marilyn Manson got two of his guns when he was sweet and suck his own dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh. The hand of glory was supposedly the carefully prepared and pickled right hand of a felon, cut off while the body still hung from the gallows and used by burglars to send sleepers in a house into coma from which they were unable to wake. In this case, should one of the fingers refuse to light, it's a sign that someone in the household remains awake. The light cannot be extinguished by water or pinching, but only by blood or blue milk. That that sounds like the perfect magic item. It does. Sound that sounds like a really it solid does. magic item you can make. If anyone wants to make that uh, magic item, you know, just put it in your campaign. Yeah. I think that's a great one to use. Okay, let me preface this with saying Greenock is a bit of a shithole. Post-industrial sort of place. Lots of poverty, drug abuse, all that shit. Not a great place, so the story of him seems to go back 40 years. The basic gist is that in the town of Greenock, there's a strange man skin stained black as pitch with a thick shaggy beard who crawls around in his belly wherever like a solid snake he lives in the bush and scrub in the wastelands with the stray cats by all accounts he is a mute either unable or unwilling to talk at least in English or what passes for it in Greek (laughs) though he does clearly understand it his name comes from the strange habit he has that he's been seen often catching and eating rats and allegedly also pigeons and squirrels. Lots of eyewitness accounts and even videos exist of him, and by all accounts, he's quite agreeable, not aggressive, not skittish, not really what you'd expect from your usual jiggy sort. Though some older accounts, presumably because he would have been younger, are that he had a habit of haunting one particular lane, and would jump out and passers-by. Age mellows people and all that. Oh, so I really enjoy this cat man. Rat he, man? There's a rat man, sorry. Yeah. Like, there's videos on YouTube, you about can find him. videos. Yeah. I'll flash one of them up on screen. I'll try and find the one of someone feeding him a bottle of Buck Fast. It's yeah, funny it's as fuck. mad. But if you want to know more about him, go over to Count Dankula and just type in Rat Man of Greenock or you'll find whatever it, it is. You'll type it in Count Dankula does a really good video on or him. Or check out the pictures of him on Google it's Images. It's just fucking it, crazy. It's pretty much like, it's like the Scottish version of Mothman. But real. <laughs> yeah. Well, obviously, like, okay, I'm sorry to say, the um, he is probably... No, he is. He is fake. Let's be serious. Oh, no. 100%. Who, Mothman? No, um, the Ratman. Oh, the Ratman. I like to think that he's not. <laughs> I like to think he's just a genuine crackhead. Yeah, so yeah. Just, just, well, it's Scotland. It's yeah, Green Oak, so Of course he's a crackhead. <laughs> not going to argue with you there. So we're going to end it here, but we're not finishing the video as of yet. So we both want to talk about our own personal favourite local mythology um, folklore creatures and beasts. Mm -hmm. So Megan, do you want to go first? Yeah, well mine's not local to Ireland. It's more American. Um, It's, I'm sure you've mostly mostly all of you have heard about it. It's the Black Eyed Children. I think it's it would be very good in the game concept anyway. I I think think it would be really spooky. Well, Black Eyed Children anyway, you know what they are. Like, they knock on your door. They knock on your car. They ask for help. They've got eyes as black as soul like Mm. like they're really really black but I remember reading a story where like it was a report that um, 
two black eyed kids knocked on the door of like an elderly people's home and they came in they let them in and said um, we're waiting on our parents so the elderly couple let them in and they stayed and weird things started happening and then their parents came and got them and they left and weird things started happening again like the cats all died the husband had like a heart attack and mm. it was weird but I think it I really like the black eyed children I think they and work. there's loads and loads of accounts of them too. yeah they, they did go through there was a phase in like I think 2014 or so like, something like it was that. like after Slender Mum yeah it was like a thing yeah but I'm all into that like spooky folklore yeah I, th- I think it's good mm-hmm. well for my one my one's not spooky at all and it's very famous and everyone knows about it and it's not really that big of a thing so like everyone knows the Giant's Causeway or if you don't know I'll if you f- don't know what the Giant's Causeway I'll f- is I'll throw a picture up on screen so it's this weird um, rock it's like a natural rock formation but they do look like stepping stones and they are in a really weird shape they're all hexagons yeah, it's so it's, weird it's bizarre as anyway anyway look how the story goes is so the there's a giant that lives down there called Finn McCull he decides you know what I'm hard as fuck I can kick <laughs> the fuck out of all the giants in Ireland because I'm that hard mm-hmm. you know what I mean and to prove how hard I am you know what I'm going to go across I'm going to go over to England I'm going to kick a fuck out of them once too mm-hmm. so I'm just to show just how strong I am because <laughs> you know like I'm top deck here I, I'm sure I could be top deck over there too <laughs> so he, the problem is there's no boots big enough to get him across so he decides I'd fuck it I'm going to make myself my own way across so he starts building this bridge yeah builds a bridge he gets his way across and he catches a glimpse of another giant I can't remember what the other giant's name no, was no I can't remember what um, was. however this other giant was absolutely fucking gigantic and he already heard Finn was talking shite and, and he's th- like mate are you right? talking bollocks or what so of course your yeah, other fellow decides right I'm gonna go around to Finn's and knock his content <laughs> so Finn sees just how big he is and like Finn's already a giant but this guy's way, way bigger. bigger so he's like oh Jesus fuck this so he runs back to the house and he's and Finn's got a child so he does he's got a wife and kids and mm-hmm. very young infant child yeah. so he fucks the baby giant out the crib so he does mm-hmm. and jumps in the crib himself and pretends and, uh, to act like the baby and then so the other giant that he's supposed to have a fight with calls on round and the wife gets him on him and like oh don't worry Finn will be back soon you know he's, he's just out doing his usual you know we'll get the fight ready for you it's like oh here look, help us help us with the child here and uh, the other giant comes over and he looks at Finn pretending to be a baby he's like Jesus fuck that's his child <laughs> <laughs> that's his child I don't want to go near him so the giant runs off so he does and he breaks up the bridge on his way mm-hmm. making sure the Finn never follows him mm-hmm. um, I like that one yeah. I know it's a bit stupid and childish but it is, I like it, it it's a fun um, it's if a fun you story. go to the Giants Causeway, it has like well, the rocks are formed like a chair, like a big giant's chair, and you can sit in the giant's chair and take a yeah. photo. It's it's really cool. It is. It's something to check out. I'll throw all the pictures up yeah. if I haven't been already. But I think that's where we're going to end it. I want to do more of this because there's a lot more to this thread, yeah. and I am really interested in what uh, I would like is if you have your own folklore yeah. from like round where you live or just local mm. in general, or if it's just like countrywide yeah. folklore write it in the comments down below like what is it Americans you use love your windigos and your shape shifters skinwalkers skin and stuff wa- like that yeah. but if you have any good ones write them down below and we'll have a look because I'd rather do your ones than read off the thread yeah uh-huh. but I, I do like, it depends on how you guys receive this video or not because yeah. it is very different from what we normally do but I like, I like this sort of stuff and I think you can really incorporate any of these creatures into yeah there's so many different elements you can bring in you know you you like it and i and i like doing that type of shit yeah but like like guys that's where we're going to end it actually so so, uh, as always hope you guys enjoyed Uh, it does help us out a lot if you check check out the the models we've also got some new fifth edition subclasses up for sale yes we also have t-shirts as well go check that out hit subscribe and hit the notification bell so you get notified every time we post and we'll see you in the next video bye